21st Biennial State Level Conference of Judicial Officers on the theme Equity and Excellence for Futuristic Judiciary was inaugurated at Yelanka in Bengaluru on March 23rd by Chief Minister Sidramaiah and Chief Justice of India T.Y. Chandrachur. During the event, Chief Minister Sidramaiah highlighted the influence of Buddha, Basavanna and Narayana Guru on the modern Indian judicial system, emphasizing its foundational values. Chief Justice, on the other hand, quoting Kannada writer Dr. Shivaram Karanath, Chief Justice, on the other hand, quoting Kannada writer Dr. Shivaram Karanath, urged judicial officers to have confidence in their abilities and to be bold in their decisions, especially as district judges who serve as the first point of contact for citizens. Addressing the performance of Karnataka's judiciary, the CJI noted that between February 1, 2023 and March 23, 2024, approximately 21.25 lakh cases entered the system at the district level, with a similar number of cases being resolved. He emphasized the importance of data collection to address issues faced by district judiciaries. Elandu Namaskara Honorable Chief Justice of India, Dr. Justice Dhananjaya Vai Chandrachu, Honorable Judge of Supreme Court of India, Sri Justice A.S. Bopanna, Honorable Judge of Supreme Court of India, Srimati Justice B.V. Nagaratna, Honorable Judge of Supreme Court of India, Sri Justice Arvind Kumar, Honorable Chief Justice of the Court of Karnataka, Sri Justice N.V. Anjariya, Sri Arish A., the President of Karnataka State Judici- Judicial Officers Association, Sri H.K. Navina, the General Secretary of Karnataka State Judicial Officers Association, all dignitaries, friends from media, the ladies and gentlemen. I am pleased to be part of this August gathering on the occasion of 21st Biennial State Level Conference of Judicial Officers. It is an absolute pleasure to welcome the esteemed Chief Justice of India, Justice Dhananjaya Y. Chandrachu, along with all distinguished participants to this conference here in Karnataka. As I stand before this esteemed assembly, I am filled with profound respect for each member present here today, the judiciary, the con- cornerstone of just and equitable society has always been one of the sources of inspiration for me. It is the sacred institution with its unwavering commitment of, to fairness, good conscience, reasonableness and justice that initially drew me to the field of law. The judiciary's role as the ultimate guardian of rights and liberties, resonated deeply with my own aspirations to to serve society. Witnessing the judiciary's dedication to ensuring inclusiveness and equality and its pivotal role in safeguarding all that is good and just has been a guiding light on my journey. The Constitution of India Alongside its judiciary stands as a pattern of equity and excellence, embodying the core principles of justice, equality, and the unwavering pursuit of an equitable society. By architecting a constitution that champions the rights of the marginalized and embodies the principles of justice and equality, Baba Saheb Ambedkar laid the groundwork for a judiciary that stands as a guardian of these 
ideas. The modern Indian judicial justice system, enriched by this legacy, also draws its values from the teachings of Buddha, Basavanna, Narayan Guru, the enlightening Vachanas, and many progressive thinkers of our nation, which collectively emphasize inclusively compassion and the need for societal reform. This confluence of visionary leadership and rich cultural ethos has shaped a justice system that aspires not just to adjudicate but to uplift and transform society. The Indian judiciary has made the country proud by its landmark judgments upholding the rights of the people, especially the Supreme Court has lived up to the expectation of Dr. Baba Sahib Vedka, the architect of the constitution, who held Article 32 as the heart and soul of the constitution. Through landmark judgments, the courts have expanded individual freedoms and championed social justice, enhancing transparency and accountability within government institutions. With historical evolution, from a colonial operator to an independent arbiter, arbiter underscores its pivotal, pivotal role in shaping India's legal landscape. While the members of the judiciary have been working tirelessly to work on the challenges facing the system and to stay true to their responsibilities, it is equally important to pause and re reflect on the approach and question, of, question how one could be more effective in achieving the larger purpose. On this note, I am reminded of the efforts of Honorable Chief Justice Dhananjaya by General Chu in leading the Indian judiciary in the right direction. Acknowledging the predominant role of the Supreme Court as the apex court, he shifted focus to long pending constitutional bench matters that have a profound impact on the direction of our legal jurisprudence and on the lives of Indians. In the face of society, societal strengths, reminiscent of Jain philosophies, Avasatmini marked by a decline in morality and virtue, the judiciary's role becomes crucial. The judiciary's duty extends beyond legal interpretation to moral stewardship guiding society towards virtue and integrity. Through its wisdom and actions, the judiciary can inspire a moral renaissance steering society away from decline and towards a path of communal harmony and elevated ethical standards embodying the resilience and guidance necessary for societal upliftment. The theme of this conference, equity and excellence for a futuristic judiciary, resonates deeply with the ethos of our democratic society and the imperatives of our time. In the quest for a futuristic judiciary, ensuring the aspects of accessibility, availability and affordability is crucial for fostering social inclusion and equality within the justice system. The pursuit of these principles is a moral imperative to ensure that justice is not a privilege of the few but a fundamental right of all. Accessibility to justice means that every citizen, irrespective of their socio-economic status, geography or literacy levels, should find the doors of our courts open to them. The use of digital platforms and e-courts is a step in the right direction, <coughs> allowing for seamless filing of cases, hearing schedules, and even the virtual court of proceedings, thus breaking down the barriers of distance and time. Availability of justice implies that our judiciary is equipped to handle the volume of cases brought before it. The perennial challenges of cases, case backlog threatens the very principle of justice, denied is justice denied. 
it is imperative that we adopt a multiple pronged strategy to address this issue. Affordability of justice is a critical concern that affects the very essence of equitable justice. Legal aid services must be strengthened and made more robust to ensure that the economically weaker sections of our society are not denied justice due to the lack of financial resources. We must work toward a system where legal aid is not just a service but a guarantee of our justice system. Language should not be barrier to justice. The use of the local language in court proceedings or the integration of artificial intelligence to provide real-time updates and translations can significantly enhance the understanding and participation of litigants in the judicial process. This not only makes the courts more accessible but also instills a greater sense of trust and confidence in the judiciary among the common people. In our relentless pursuit of justice and equity, both the state and judiciary have historically been more powerful than the society. Courageously confronting and dismantling the social evils that have long shackled our, shackled our society, society, the state has firmly stood against terrible practices like sati and untouchability and the unfairness of child marriage driven by a belief in promoting freedom and empowering people. Through transformative initiatives like land reforms and the enshrining of rights for women, we have not only challenged the status quo but have laid the ground work for a society that values and upholds the dignity of every individual. These actions reflect a profound commitment to rectifying historical wrongs and fostering an environment where equality and justice are not mere ideals but lived realities. We, the people of India, resolve to constitute India into a sovereign, democratic, republic, socialist, secular, as stated in the preamble. First 20 years of 20 years, for 25 years, saw the nation making steady progress towards establishing a welfare state. By 1973, India had taken bold and beautiful measures. As we stand on the soldiers of this monumental achievement, the task before us as the legislature and judiciary alike is twofold. Firstly, we must continue to identify and address the issues, social concerns that persist, evolving our approaches, approaches and strategies to meet the complex demands of our times. Secondly, we must rigorously ensure that the provisions and reforms already in place are effectively implemented, truly transforming lives and uprooting the remnants of social evils. This dual commitment to action and vigilance embodies the philosophy that guides us a belief in the relentless pursuit of just society where inclusivity, inclusive growth, Plurality and equality are not aspirational goals, but the very foundations upon which our nation is built. It is through this shared vision and unwavering dedication that we can continue to forge future marked by social justice and the empowerment of every citizen. As said by our poet Kuempo, our shared vision should be to realize Sarva Janangada Shanti Yathota, a peaceful land of all communities. I took forward to the productive and insightful deliberations over the course of this conference. Thank you all. Jai Hind, Jai Karnataka.